to everyone. So we uh, had a cabinet uh, meeting today and uh, the main agendas today that were taken up uh, was regarding uh, the notification for the Meghalaya Minor Minerals Reclamation Fund Management Guidelines 2022. Uh, so under the uh, Minor Minerals, uh, uh, we had uh, started a, a reclamation fund uh, back in the year 2015. And this was based on an order from the High Court. Uh, based on that, uh, the funds have been collected, but uh, the guidelines to actually use them uh, had not been framed. They were in the preparation, in the process of being framed. And uh, now that uh, the framing has been done, this had come to the cabinet for its approval, and uh, we have approved it. After this is done, the utilization of the funds uh, through a governing body and through an executive uh, committee will be undertaken. <coughs> So there is no there is no specific uh, yeah so there is no specific amount for a specific fund. It'll depend on the proposals that will come up. Um, so for this, um, a number of departments have been identified through which the implementation will be done. For example, the soil conservation, the water resource, uh, the mining geology, the forest department, um, then uh, you know um, uh, the PCCF, the pollution board. Uh, so different kind of um, uh, bodies have been and departments have been identified through which these uh, funds will be released. And this will be uh, worked out at the executive committee level, which will be finally approved by the governing body, which is headed by the uh, minister in charge of forest, and uh, the vice chairperson is the chief. So therefore, this governing body that has been formed, which is headed by the minister, and uh, the vice chairperson is the chief secretary, and there are other members from different departments. So there's a governing body, and under the governing body, there's an executive committee, which is headed by the secretary or the additional chief secretary of forest department and other department officials will be part of that and uh, this executive committee will then put up the proposals which will be approved then by the governing body given approval to the gst rules uh, which were um, uh, also some of them were ex post facto uh, from 2018 19 20 and 21 these are basically gst rules uh, that are applicable with the amendments that come in and uh, so normally uh, we amended the act but uh, we also uh, felt that the rules also should be placed in cabinet. So hence, uh, we went through the entire exercise of placing all the rules also, which followed the amendment to the Act, uh, also, also placed in the cabinet for its approval. We've also started a fellowship program. Uh, this is the third one uh, with National Law School of India. The purpose of this uh, fellowship program is to have a... a students and the graduates uh, and people who are following the uh, their graduation and post graduation in national law school india bangalore uh, to work with the government of india so there will be two fellowships we are calling the fellowship the ps sangma fellowship for legal and policy research training collaboration and the national law school will select these fellowships and a small stipend will be given to uh, these individuals to work with the government uh, departments to ensure that uh, uh, you know the research, proper research, and everything is done in this uh, policy making. At the same time, our uh, officials will also be sent to National Law School of India, Bangalore, uh, to also get training in these aspects. So these were the th uh, and of course we had also for the, the uh, NTPC uh, power purchase agreement. As you're aware, in 2011, this agreement was signed where uh, uh, Meghalaya government uh, had to take power from. NTPC, and if it did not take power, even then it had to pay for the set amount that was allotted to Meghalaya. Uh, we are very uh, fortunate that after a lot of hard work and even uh, some court cases, uh, now NTPC has uh, uh, agreed and they are working towards reallocating the power to different states. Uh, so approximately 56 megawatts has been allotted to Tamil Nadu of the share of 86 that was total for Meghalaya, which means almost about 70% now Meghalaya government doesn't have to pay for it anymore. So now we are hopeful that very soon the rest of the 25, 30 megawatts that's left, even that will be uh, you know, given to other states. And uh, with that, we will be completely free of this agreement that was signed uh, many, many years back because of which uh, more than 300 to 400 crores Meghalaya government had to pay for not uh, having used even a single unit of power. Uh, but that has now changed. And we are going to see that uh, the, the, the uh, power will be used by Tamil Nadu. 
and this agreement I think is already signed or will be signed in a few days and uh, hopefully the rest of the power also will be reallocated. Of the terms of service of uh, Colonel uh, Gautam Rai, who is the director of Senec Board, uh, his term was extended by three years and also the term of Colonel M. Uh, Shushafir Sa uh, Singh, uh, the post of Zilla Senec Welfare Officer Tura, both these three, po uh, both these two posts were um, uh, extended for another three years. So these were the decisions that were taken today. Well, you see, this uh, entire um, incentive fund, which was uh, uh, started uh, in uh, the previous government's time, uh, so the incentives uh, were building up, and uh, if you look at the amounts that were released, uh, uh, amount of approximately about ten or twelve crores was released in 2011. Uh, and then again in 2013 or 12, I can't remember right now, another maybe 10 or 12 crores was released. And then after that, uh, for almost four years, none of the incentives were released. And this kept building up for many, many years. Uh, it was only when uh, uh, the MDA came in 2018, we released a large amount in, uh, in 2019 and another amount in 2020. And then we have released the highest amount, which is about 56 crores uh, this year. And uh, while we were clearing the amounts that were due in the last three years, we also cleared the amounts that were not paid in the previous four years before we, uh, before we uh, took uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the government here. So this has been building up. Uh, it has been a, a big challenge. And uh, like in the power sector, uh, while we cleared the Atman Nirvan loan and cleared the NTPC amount of 400, 300, 400 crores uh, for power which we did not use, uh, similarly, in Asha case also, they were, these are all build-ups. Uh, and again, th th this is a, it's a continuous process, uh, but as I said, uh, backlogs were there. And uh, though we were clearing the, uh, the immediate uh, uh, bills that were coming to us, uh, we were not able to clear the backlogs of the previous government. So now we have in a position and we have done that. And uh, still some amount is left, which we will be clearing. Uh, in the next uh, maybe few uh, months. I have not been able to, uh, as you're aware, um, they submitted the report on the day this, uh, um, uh, we had, uh, we were in Delhi for the border, um, uh, you know, the, uh, signing. Um, and so, of course, I could not spend much time, I could not go through it. I was traveling yesterday, so today I've just uh, uh, concluded the cabinet. Uh, we will need a few days to just go through the entire report. Uh, it's a quite a uh, thick report. And um, once we go through it, um, we should be able to come back to you in a few maybe days' time. So kindly give us some time to go through the report. But I'm thankful to the committee. Uh, the three members have worked very hard. And in a very short time, they have managed to really go through it. And as the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister in Charge Power had given a commitment that within the month of March, the reports will be submitted. It has been submitted. And we will go through it and we'll get back to you. See, number one, uh, while we went ahead for this uh, entire process, a uh, lot of them, uh, especially the opposition, uh, is saying that stakeholders should be consulted. Uh, I don't think that there has been a more detailed consultation with the stakeholders than what we had done in the last six months. So it's quite unfortunate to see opposition bringing this issue up and saying that uh, there should have been uh, stakeholders consultation. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, earlier there were no stakeholders consultations, uh, you know, but for the first time we actually went down to the grassroots and it is the will of the people and after discussing with the people that uh, the solution has been reached to. So yes, um, I have been maintaining from day one that it may not be the most perfect solution that everybody in Meghalaya would want, but this is definitely one of the best solutions that we could reach to and the uh, majority of the areas which we had asked for, majority of the areas where our people are there. Uh, you know, it has come to Meghalaya. And yes, there have been situations where the principles on the basis of which we had uh, got the areas which we had asked for, on similar principles, uh, those areas, other areas went to Assam. So obviously, I've maintained from day one that uh, while we discuss this critical matter, uh, we cannot change principles, you know, as per our needs and as per our desires. A principle has to apply both for Meghalaya and for Assam. And therefore, uh, we went with the principle of public's uh, opinion and public's will and ethnicity, and that is what has uh, helped us to reach uh, this spot. Uh, if any concerns are there, we are ready to uh, again explain to everybody about this. But majority of the stakeholders, uh, majority of the public is very happy with uh, how we have gone ahead with this. And opposition, 
Of course, we'll say things. I think the opposition also should uh, realize that it's not that they have to oppose everything that the government does. Opposition has to realize that um, there are sometimes uh, we have to work together in the interest of the state and the people. And this is the time that we should be together. And uh, people of the state and especially the border areas have suffered for far too long. And uh, development has been affected. People's lives have been put in danger. Uh, this cannot go on forever. And therefore, we have taken the decision that we will find the solution. And I'm happy that uh, with the help of the Ministry of Home Affairs and with the cooperation of uh, the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam, that we have finally been able to come to this point in the six locations. And I'm hopeful that we will be able to move forward in the other six locations also. So, as you are aware, the first step for this process is the two states to agree. So, uh, we worked very hard to make sure that the two states agree on a stand. The second step is to take it to the level of the national government, where we uh, share our uh, uh, conclusion and whatever we have agreed on uh, with the central government. And that's what happened this time. So that now the central government is also aware of what we have done. Ultimate stamp for this uh, is not between two states or the government. It is the parliament of uh, India uh, that is going to put a stamp for this. So based on the surveys now, that will be conducted. This is very, very important to understand that uh, we have now identified the villages and the rough areas which uh, should be in Meghalaya and the villages in the rough areas which should be in Assam. Now we have to actually go down to the actual tree or the particular house or the particular road uh, which should be on Meghalaya side and which should be on Assam side. It means micro details. And this is where Survey of India will come in. And they have been asked to coordinate with both the state governments uh, and uh, do joint surveys, not to do surveys individually. It has to be joint survey. And that process, once it's complete, and when the second phase, of course, also is complete with this joint survey, then we expect government of India to put up a, a bill uh, to reorganize the um, or redraw the borders. And that bill then will be put up in parliament, and that will be the final stamp on it. So it, it is still... Uh, process that will take uh, some time to work on but what is important is that this process has finally started and um, uh, and I keep maintaining that there are two three things that a lot of people must understand that number one we have seen that this exercise has allowed us to build trust between both the states and the stakeholders also uh, and number two this has also allowed us to lay down some principles on the basis of which we will uh, we will move forward uh, and number three, most importantly, it has set, set the ball rolling where uh, you are actually seeing the officials, uh, whether it's at the district level or the state level or the central level, we are all aware and involved in the process. And therefore, whenever there's a situation, like I was, uh, I was made to understand that there was a situation where, uh, you know, certain uh, plastic pillars were again put up somewhere in West Khasi Hill side. And immediately within a matter of uh, minutes, I spoke to the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam. And he was very concerned about this and said that this should not happen at all. And uh, I will give immediate instructions to my team. And I think this, this kind of an environment uh, will obviously lead to a proper implementation of projects as well as peace in the area. And both the states will work towards ensuring that uh, while we resolve this issue, the people of this area should not suffer. So it's a process. I'm not saying we've completed everything. Uh, it is not easy, but uh, we have uh, come to a significantly, um, you know, a, a good position now to finally uh, find a conclusion and a solution to uh, the problems in the border area. We'll see. We will. Um, uh, we'll just catch our breath for uh, for some time. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a tough uh, six months. Not been easy, uh, but we're not going to waste time. I can assure you that we are. We want the momentum to be continue uh, with the kind of understanding and the trust that has built up between the officials uh, at all the levels and with the political leadership I think it's an it's appropriate time to take the discussions forward um, but we'll do it very soon I don't think it'll be possible for me to give a date but I can assure the people of our state and uh, the region also that uh, we are concerned about this and uh, we will do our best to take the next phase also forward Thank you.